Okay, now for M1 2019 October exam. Um, we're going to start with question number four. This is an international A level exam from Edexcel. Um, <clears throat> question number four says a particle P of mass Km lies on a fixed rough plane. Okay, so there's going to be friction involved here. The plane is inclined to the horizontal at an acute angle theta. So you know the angle is acute. A horizontal force <coughs> of magnitude x acts on P as shown in figure 1. The line of action of the force lies in the vertical plane which contains the line of greatest slope of the inclined plane which passes through P. The coefficient of friction between P and the inclined plane is mu. Okay. When x equals mg, okay, when x equals mg, the particle is in equilibrium and on the point of sliding down the plane. The point of sliding down the plane. Okay. So, um, show that mu equals k tan theta minus 1 over k plus tan theta. Alright, let's just first of all start by putting all the forces on this diagram. Alright, so now we have the mass, so you've got the weight acting down, let me just put that with the arrow. We have the weight acting down, which is kmg. Okay, mass km, so that means the force acting down due to the weight is kmg. Alright, you also have this horizontal force. Now what I like to do is, uh, when there's a force acting in this direction, I like to draw it on this side of it. It doesn't make any difference. I like to draw it on that side of it. That way, it just, it just makes it a lot easier to visualize it when you're resolving the forces. So I always do this. So I always do when I have a question like that. I just redraw the force, of course, in the same orientation, but on the other side. Um, that's what I prefer to do. Okay. So there we have our... That's x newtons acting in that way. Now, it's on the point of sliding down the plane. It says when x equals mg, okay, so this is equal to mg. All right, the particle P is in equilibrium and on the point of sliding down the plane. Now, when it says it's, on the, it's in equilibrium, so all the forces are in balance. When it says on the point of sliding down the plane, okay, this is an important point here. What it means is the friction has reached its maximum possible value. So the frictional value is equal to, okay, it's equal to F max, the maximum possible value it can have. And F max will always equal mu R. F max is equal to mu R. And if it's on the point of sliding down the plane, okay, friction is going to be acting in the opposite direction, the way to, in the direction that will um, you know, oppose the motion. So if it's about to slide down, friction is acting up to stop it. So this is F max. Okay, and we also have another force acting, which is the reaction force when the object is in contact with the surface and it's always perpendicular to the plane. So this is your reaction force. And we know that F max equals mu r. Okay, so now I'm going to do some resolving of the forces. I know this angle here is theta, okay, um, this angle here is theta because of corresponding angles with parallel lines, okay, <clears throat> so I can resolve the forces um, parallel and perpendicular to the plane, okay, so let me just draw this here, and another one, one for the weight and one for the, the force x. And for the weight, it's going to be acting in this direction, but the force X is going to resolve in this direction. Okay, so let's deal with the weight first. You've got kmg, so this is this angle, remember, is theta, same as this angle over here, through similarity. And this is kmg cosine theta, and this is kmg sine theta. And here we have. Remember, when you're going into the angle, it's always cosine. When you're going away from the angle, it's always sine. So if I want to resolve this force in this direction, I have to go into the angle theta. So it's going to be kmg cosine theta. 
If I'm going to resolve it in this direction, I have to go away from the angle given. So it's kmg sine theta. Similarly, if I want to resolve xmg, or oh, sorry, x, um, the force x in this direction parallel to the plane, it's going to be going into the angle. So this will be x times cosine theta. If I want to go away from the angle, in this direction here, so away from the angle theta, this will be x times sine theta. So I have now resolved all my forces and everything's written down there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, first of all, I'm going to resolve the forces in the directions parallel and perpendicular to the plane. So let me take the perpendicular to the plane first. So the forces acting in this plane here, perpendicular to the planes, you've got R acting in one direction, and you've got X sine theta and K mg cosine theta in the other direction. So it's an equilibrium, so R is equal to X sine theta plus, and you have um, K mg cosine theta, K mg cosine theta. All right, now we know that x is equal to, as they told us, mu r. x is equal to mu r, they told us. Uh, no, sorry, not m, sorry, x is equal to mg. f is equal to mu r, of course. x is equal to mg. Okay, this is when x equals mg. So I can replace this with r equals mg sine theta plus k m g cosine theta. All right, now, secondly, um, we're going to resolve parallel to the plane, okay? So I'm going to resolve parallel to the plane. It's on the point of sliding down. It doesn't really matter, but it's on the point of sliding down. So I will take down the plane as positive. Down the plane, you only have k m g sine theta. K, this is parallel to the plane. k m g sine theta. And that's equal to the forces acting up the plane, which are the friction, which is F max plus X cosine theta. So you've got F max plus X cosine theta. Now we know that F max is equal to mu R. We know X is equal to mg, so we can replace those. So we have K mg sine theta equals mu times R plus x, which is mg, cosine theta. Now, we, what we can do now is we know what r is equal to, okay? Uh, we can replace this r here with what r is equal to, okay? So we can just basically substitute. It's equation one, equation two, we can use substitution now. I can replace the r of this equation with what it's equal to from the first equation. So I'm gonna have k mg, sine theta equals mu times what r is which is mg sine theta plus kmg cosine theta and i'm going to have plus mg cosine theta now what do i have to show i have to show that mu equals something so let me make mu the subject of this Here's my mu. In order to make mu the subject of this, let me just first subtract this from both sides. So I have k mg sine theta minus mg cosine theta. And then I'm going to divide by this. I'm subtracting this from both sides and dividing by what mu is equal to. So I'll divide by mg sine theta plus kmg cosine theta and that's equal to mu and what you'll notice is there's mg in every single term you can cancel those out so we have mu is equal to <coughs> k sine theta minus cosine theta over sine theta plus k cosine theta. And what have we got to show? Well, what we've got to show is involving tan thetas and not sine or cosine thetas. And what we should know from our, our knowledge from P2 is that tan theta is equal to sine theta 
divided by cosine theta. So if I want to end up with having tan thetas here, if I divide um, both the numerator and the denominator by cosine theta, I'll end up with sine theta over cosine theta. So I'm dividing both the numerator and the denominator by cosine theta. So I can say mu is equal to. If I divide this by cosine theta, I'll have k times sine theta over cosine theta, which would be k tan theta, minus cosine theta divided by cosine theta, which is minus 1, divided by, and I have sine theta divided by cosine theta, which is tan theta, and I have k cosine theta divided by cosine theta, which gives you just k. And I think that's exactly what we had to show. k tan theta minus 1 over k plus tan theta. The same thing, k plus tan theta. So we've basically proven what we had to prove. Okay, just by resolving forces. And in all these type of questions, when you have any question about you know these planes, inclined planes and such, just by resolving the forces horizontally and vertically, even, even if you looked at this and said, how, how on earth am I going to end up with this? Don't worry about it. Just resolve the forces parallel to the plane, perpendicular to the plane, just taking care of the angles. What I did is I, I changed the force that was, that was drawn here and just drew it over there to make life a bit easier for resolving. There's no problem with you doing that. Um, redrawing and doing that is absolutely fine. And then just once you resolve the forces, you'll end up with, you know, you resolve them parallel and perpendicular to the plane. You'll end up with a pair of equations, okay, you know, and then you can just see, okay, let me just manipulate it. I can replace the R here with mg sine theta plus kmg cosine theta. And then, you know, of course it says show that mu equals, so you have to make mu the subject, just doing some algebraic manipulation, making mu the subject. And then your answer has tan, tan theta, isn't it? You don't have tan theta. You have sine and cosine. So you remember identities from P2. So if you realize you divide everything by cosine theta, you'll end up with the answer. Okay, so that's the answer to part A. Now for part B. It says deduce that when k equals 1, theta must be greater than 45 degrees. Okay, so let's first of all take what we found here and make tan theta the subject. I think that would be sensible. So if we make tan theta the subject of this, you'll have mu times k plus mu times tan theta. I've just multiply both sides by this denominator to make uh, get rid of the fraction. That's equal to k tan theta minus 1. So bringing the tan thetas together, I think it's sensible to bring the tan thetas together on this side so that you end up without having these both of these negatives. So you can have mu k plus 1 equals k tan theta minus mu tan theta. Okay. Now, we can take the tan theta here as common. So you have mu k plus 1 and you're going to have tan theta times k minus mu okay so now we can sub divide both sides by k minus mu so you'll end up with tan theta equals mu k plus 1 over k minus mu now it says when k equals 1 k equals 1 then tan theta is going to be mu plus 1 over 1 minus mu. It says deduce that theta must be greater than 45. All right, I know mu is definitely somewhere between 0 and 1. Okay, and I also know, therefore, that mu plus 1 must be greater than 1 minus mu. Okay, mu plus 1 must be greater than 1 minus mu because here you've got the value of mu and you're adding 1 to it and here you've got 1 and you're taking away mu from it. Okay, so for example if mu was say 0.3 that would be 1.3 and that would be 0 0.7. This, is always, this numerator is always going to be greater than the denominator because here you're adding it to 1 and here you're taking it away from 1. Okay, so you're always going to, and mu is never going to be negative. Okay, so you're always adding something to 1 and you're always taking away something from 1. Uh, the same thing you're taking away from 1, so therefore this will always be greater than 1. So tan theta, we can say from this, therefore tan theta 
must be always greater than 1. Okay, and that tells us that theta must be greater than 45 degrees. Okay, because we know from the tan curve that if you, if you were to draw the tan curve, it looks something like this between 0 and 90 degrees. We know that theta is acute, so it has to be between 0 and 90 degrees. They told us that. So um, at 45 degrees, the tan of theta, the tan of 45 is equal to 1. Okay, and you can see that when, um, when tan theta is greater than 1, when tan theta is greater than 1, the angle must be greater than 45 degrees. Okay, so this is definitely true. Okay, so that, I think that's fine for the answer. It's worth two marks. So you've shown that the numerator must be bigger than the denominator. Okay, because this must, this is, of course, this is always going to be bigger than that. So there we have our answer for question number 4B. Thank you for watching.